Hey everybody, it's Mr. N here. We're going to do the next lesson. This is on proving triangles congruent. Um, in this section, it says by side angle side by SAS, but I'm also going to cover the other one, which is side, side, side. And that's typically the first one we usually cover, but I'm going to go ahead and do it right now. And um, I've listed it here. First, let's do the side angle side one. And we've got side angle side postulate. If two sides and the included angle of one triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So let me explain to you what this means. So suppose I had these two triangles, and I've drawn a second triangle here uh, real quick, and we've got triangle ABC, and triangle we'll call this one D, E, and F right there. So ABC and DEF, and we have an included angle. So an included angle, real quick, right here, is angle formed by two adjacent sides of a polygon. So in other words, if I have a side here and I have a side there, this is the included angle between these two sides. Okay, so if I tell you that A to B is congruent to DE, and then I tell you that BC is congruent to EF, and this included angle right there is congruent. So angle B would be congruent to angle E. So angle B congruent to angle E. And then we said AB congruent to DE and EF congruent to BC. So this is the included angle. Notice the situation I have, the scenario. I have a side an included angle, and a side. Notice the angle has to be between the two sides. Side, angle, side. Side, angle, side. If I have this scenario where this congruent to this, BE, and then EF to BC, then automatically you can tell me that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle D, E, F. And the reason for that would be side, angle, side, congruence. Because, again, we have a side congruent to a side. We have an angle that's included. Notice the angles in between the other sides, the other two sides right there that are congruent. Now, going along that, we can also come up with a side angle or side, side, side congruence theorem. Some books, many books will call them these postulates. So, uh, just so that you know that. But the side, side, side one is very similar, and I'll draw a couple triangles. In fact, I'll just use the triangles that they have right here. And notice that here, AB is congruent to DE. BC is congruent to EF. And AC congruent to DF. So, since these corresponding sides are congruent to the corresponding sides on the other, automatically these two triangles are congruent. So we say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF right there. And the reason for that is by the side, oops, let's use the right tool here, the side, side, side congruence. Okay, so we've learned two today. We can prove triangles congruent by side angle side and we could prove triangles congruent by side, side, side. The key for this one, though, is that angle needs to be the included one in between the two sides. All right, so now let me move this right here out of the way a little bit. Uh, I'm going to move this one. Okay, so now we have this situation right here, and we have to write whether these uh, triangles can be uh, proven congruent by side, 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 or side, angle, side. So the first one, we have these two triangles. Now look, this will be congruent to itself right here, this piece, by reflexive. So then I've got a situation where I have this angle and these two sides. So this side, this side, and these two angles right there. So I'm looking at triangle. Let me label these for you guys so you can see. This is, I'll just put a triangle one in here and a triangle two right there. So I'm looking at those two triangles. Now, I cannot show that these two triangles are congruent because in this situation, I have 
side, side, angle, side, side, angle, and I can't use that. This is not one of these two that I'm looking for right now. We're going to learn some other ones, but side, side, angle will never work. So there is nothing else I can show there. So if no triangles can be proved congruent, we're going to write neither. Okay, so that's the situation for this one. All right, let's take a look at this one. I've got two right triangles on number two. If I solve for this third side, that's going to be five. That's going to be five. So this side is congruent to that one, this one to this one, and um, this third side to that third side. So you could say side, side, side. Now, some of you may have said, hey, look, look, Mr. N, Mr. N, check this out. Check this out. Look what I got. Look what you got here. You don't need that third side. What if you take a look at this and you say, look. I've got this side to this side, and then I've got this angle to this one, and then these two sides right here, okay? So this is an included side. It's a right angle. They're both 90. So you could have said side angle side on this one as well. Okay, taking a look at the next one. Let's move this up. All right, what can we do? Well, again, here's a situation where I have this angle right here, and let's do a different color. I've got this angle to this one, this side to this, but it's not an included angle. So again, on this one, I have nothing that I can say that shows any congruence whatsoever as far as the two triangles. So this one is neither. Okay, over here. Okay, well, this is a 6, there's a 6, 7 matches with a 7, 4 and a 4, so this is by side, side, side. So the two triangles are congruent there. Now, find the value of x, so the triangles are congruent. Okay, well, now I need to make these congruent. So, in other words, if I wanted this to be congruent, I know this one is congruent to itself by reflexive, right? So then I just need this, these two thirds sides to be congruent to each other, so I can go ahead and solve for that value of x by setting these equal. So 20x would equal this 22x uh, minus the 3.6. Okay, so over here I'll end up with 2x equals this 3.6 on this side if I just bring each of them over to the other sides. So x will be 1.8. All right, so 1.8 here. All right, on the next one over here we've got uh, this side to this one, right? and then this one to this one, and then here's my included angle. So this would be by side, side, side. This one was by, or side, angle, side. This one was over here by side, side, side. All right, so let's take a look, and let's do this. So that means I would need these two angles to be equal to each other. So 6x uh, minus that 27 would have to be equal to the 4x uh, plus the 7. Okay, so let's take a look here. We can say 2x, and I could bring this 27, add 27 to each side, I would get 34. So then x would be my value of 17, and that is that. All right, let's slide this up. Do we have any more on this page? No, let's see if we are going to continue on. All right, we've got over here, we've got uh, number eight, and this is the one I wanted to do. We're gonna do one proof here, and take a look. We are given this scenario. We have LK congruent to JH, GK, and they've, la they've labeled all these, uh, GK congruent to GJ, uh, and then we know that angle GKL is congruent to angle GJ, and then H over here. So basically, we've got this triangle congruent to that one. You can tell right away that these two triangles are congruent by side, angle, side. Side, the included angle, and then the side. What I need to prove is that triangle GLJ, this one, is congruent to GHK. Let me take these two triangles out and redraw them here on the side for you. So here's my this piece, and this was G, L, and then J over here, and then the other side was G, H, and then K. So this one kind of looked like this, like this. Uh, let me draw it a little bit better. That didn't, that didn't look so well. Like this one, like this one, and this is G, and this was uh, H and K. 
All right, so that's what I'm trying to prove is these two. Well, let's take a look real quick. Before I even start this proof, let's take a look at some of the things we know. We know right here that I've got GK, so this piece right here was congruent to GJ, right? So GJ, so that one right there. And then I knew that this triangle right here would be congruent to that one. And the reason for that is, look, we've got a situation of side, angle side. Okay, so G, uh, GKL congruent to GJH. And I'm going to use that to help me out with something else. Because later we're going to learn, and we've learned it, that if these two triangles are congruent, then that means this piece would be congruent to that piece right there. And that's called corresponding parts. And I'm going to help, I'm going to use that in my proof to help explain what's going on. So let's try to put all this together. All right, so step one. And I'm going to list all these things here. I'm just, for time reasons, I'm just going to circle and put it there. And that's all, all my givens. Okay, so step two now. I can say that, we'll go ahead and do what I just said, triangle, and I'm going to put these, let's just do a different color here. Triangle GKL, triangle GKL is going to be congruent to triangle uh, G, J, H, G, J, H, and this is going to be uh, by, uh, in this case, it'll be, we said, side, angle, side, okay? So next, step three. All right, so now that we did that, we're going to say G, L, or G, L, yes, G, L, is going to be congruent to G, H, and this was by corresponding parts. Later, we're going to call this one CPCTC. We'll get into that later, but just right now you could put corresponding parts. So take a look at what I have already. I've got GL right here congruent to GH because of that corresponding parts. Now I just need to prove one other thing. Well, I'm going to say that KJ is congruent to itself, right? Because that's a reflexive piece, and we know that. Um, there is, again, there's more than one way to do this. You could have gone with the angles up here. But I'm going to try to show in my example that, let's use another color so I, you, I can show it a little bit better, that this one right here would be congruent to that one right there, the LJ and HK. Um, and then I could show these two triangles congruent by side, side, side. Well, what is LJ made up of? So let's write it down. LJ is made up of... LK and KJ. LK plus KJ. Well, what is HK made up of? HK is made up of, so this HK, I'm looking at it over here now, is made up of the HJ plus the KJ. All right, so if I said that, and I know that LK from what they told me, is the same as HJ. So LK is the same as HJ. I can substitute that in and say, step five, LJ. I know that LK, we just said that, is the same as HJ. So I'll just say HJ plus KJ, which is what I have written here. So that means step six, H. And this was just a substitution. So step, step four was, we forgot to put the reasons, was segment addition. Step five, this was just a substitution step. My pen is killing me. And then step six, in this case, <clears throat> this right here, let me highlight it for you guys. Um... This is the HJ plus J, KJ. This is the HJ plus KJ. So that means these two would be congruent by transitive. So let's write that in. So let's continue on. So that means HK is congruent 
we we should say equal just to keep it in in check equals to l j and this was a transitive step okay so now i can say that h k segment is congruent to segment LJ, step 7, and this was a definition of congruent, which leaves me with step 8, my final step to say that triangle uh, GJL, or we'll say the way they call it here, GLJ is congruent to triangle uh, G, H, and K, and this was by side, side, side. Okay, again, there is more than one way to do it, but this is the one I chose for this one, um, so hopefully that helps. We'll do a few more examples in class, and we'll just stop here at this point. So thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video.